thanks for tuning in. I'll be putting all the ingredients in the description of the video as always. We've got some beautiful chopped fresh spinach, some coriander, some BIR pre-fried onions. We've got some lamb. We're using a little bit of chicken. Nice and tasty. Chopped garlic, ginger and garlic paste, halves of tomato, some coconut cream powder, some base gravy. We've got some passata with peppers and chilies. Use tomato puree if you like. And we've got the only two spices that you'll ever need for recreating all your authentic British Indian restaurant curries at home. We've got the British Indian restaurant mix powder by Taste of India and the garam masala. We're going to use a couple of other spices as well. So let's get the pan on. Pan's heated up nicely. Generous amount of oil. All the oil you add to the start of the dish won't be still there at the end. We've got something in oil terms called lossy where it evaporates and it looks a little bit unhealthy in the beginning but you'll see at the end it's not so oily which isn't always good for the thumbnail very oily curries get a lot of views on YouTube we're just going to crackle some cumin seed the pan's nice and hot and what we've got here is some pre-cooked onions so several videos back I made these pre-cooked onions and if you smell them you really get a nice part of the BIR taste if you like so adding three tablespoons so do check out how to cook pre-onions it saves a lot of time when it comes to the actual curry. Oops. Next we're going to add the lamb. Now we're proper or authentic British Indian restaurant cooking style as anybody that's bought my book or is going to buy my book will find out the lamb is always pre-cooked along with all the other ingredients in fact at British Indian restaurants but it's nice to do it from fresh so I'd call this a little bit of a fusion dish and what's really interesting there's two schools of thought really for for meat in India they don't seem to brown the meat off before they're cooked due to the reason that they're marinated so you start marinating lamb especially in yogurt and moist ingredients you're not going to able you know you're not going to be able to brown your meat off once it's marinated unless of course you use a little bit of ginger and garlic which is fine so I like to save my marinating of meats for barbecues for you know putting onto skewers and baking that type of thing but I really feel the lamb benefits from being browned off. So as the lamb continues to brown, the onions are going to caramelise. And nice chunky pieces of lamb or meat really benefits the dish. If you cut them small, they might disappear. So the aim to have a good lamb curry, or a little bit of chicken in this case, is to see those nice chunks once you've cooked the curry. We'll come back in a couple of minutes. So the onions are starting to stick. Give it a good stir. The lamb has browned off. Obviously lamb takes a little bit longer than chicken to cook. So I'm adding the chicken next. You can ignore the fact that I'm using chicken unless you think, wow, that's an interesting idea. A mixed meat curry. So that chicken will only take a couple of minutes to cook. Next we're going to add some chopped garlic. I think it's a really good idea to use some chopped garlic as well as the ginger and garlic paste. You get that lovely garlicky taste through the dish. And it's also a very popular technique in India 
with a lot of Indian chefs. So things are starting to caramelise on the bottom, but they're no means burnt. And you know all that caramelisation is going to give a lot of flavour. Garlic's roasting, let's add the ginger and garlic paste as well. And we're just going to cook that down for about a minute with this temperature and we're marinating our meat so to speak at the moment. Next in with the powdered spices I like to use a little bit of turmeric as well. Very good. Generous heaped teaspoon or dessert spoon actually of mixed powder. Chili to taste. Extra hot and just a teaspoon of garam masala and I'm just going to add a little lemon juice just to create a thin gravy where we can scrape helps to have a, a spoon that concaves and joins with the pan to scrape all that caramelization off and it comes off really really easily just going to roast those spices and dried out. Just going to add some simple, going to add some coconut powder. Just make sure it's lump free so that just helps to squash it down to get all the bits out. I'm just going to give that a good stir. Coconut is going to thicken up those tomatoes and don't underestimate how long you need to cook that tomato down to get rid of the raw taste. Different passatas, different tomatoes, different levels of sweet and sometimes a sour taste. But really cook it for a good couple of minutes to get that acidity away. I'm happy for that just to reduce. Added a touch more oil. I added just a touch more oil. So if you cook lamb in this way, you brown it off first. And I'll show you a little trick or let you know how I marinate the lamb. I put a little bit of tenderizer powder on. It's a white powder. It's got an extract called papain, which is from the papaya, which is an acidity that breaks down proteins. I marinate the meat for about 20 Five minutes before cooking greatly speeds up the cooking time so you can cook the lamb in about 25 minutes especially when you brown it off in the hot oil or boona. Next we're going to add some base gravy. For a nice hot pan I'm going to add it all at once. If you're probably using an electric cooker or something quite low powered in terms of temperature, I'd recommend adding the base gravy in two stages. So it was nice and loose, so we need that to thicken up as well. Then we get that splashing all over the kitchen. The joys of cooking curry. We've got a lovely sauce there. Got the spices, the coconuts. What we're going to do is add the spinach. I like to chop the spinach a little bit. It's baby leaf. And anytime I'm using spinach in a dish, whether it be sagaloo or whatever, I always keep some coriander aside to put with the spinach. You get a beautiful taste. And we haven't added salt yet, so we're going to give it a taste once, once this is all blended. Turn the heat down now and simmer that for about 10 to 15 minutes. The oil is starting to split. We want to add some kasuri mati. So that nice subtle fenugreek taste. 
that checked for salt, we need a good chai teaspoon of salt. We've got two pieces of tomato to break up the sauce, give it texture and a little bit of elegance. Just going to let that simmer away on a very low heat. You can see all that caramelisation has come off the pan effortlessly. The sauce is thickening up. We've got ourselves a, a beautiful lamb and spinach curry that was easy to cook. And my daughter has just come into the kitchen. Hi! She's two and a half years of age. Should we have a look at you? So did you smell daddy's curry and come and have a look? Yeah. Do you like spicy food? Good, isn't it? Especially with rice. So I continued simmering the lamb nice and low and slow until it was totally soft. And we have a delicious lamb and spinach curry with a hint of coconut and a touch of chicken. Thanks for watching.